All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a really interesting episode. We are going to explain to you guys um, why all the Toyota engines are named the way they are. So right now we have all the structure right here. We're going to get into it. But before we do that, a quick word from my friend Joey. All right, so if you are a Toyota enthusiast or you make love to Toyotas like Mr. J. Bean right here, uh, you might be interested in checking out our playlist of Toyotas. We got the LS400, the Cressa, the A86, and much other things you want to check out, all right? Check it out, and don't forget, subscribe. Boom! Okay, so let's get into it. Um, in any Toyota engine, you're going to have um, a few words, or sorry, a few letters that are in, into the name, built into the name. The first category, if you want to call that, is going to be the block model. Uh, this includes uh, what revision it was um, and usually the displacement of the block. Um, you know, for example, like, like a, a 2 is a larger engine by block than a 1 or a 4 than a 3, etc., etc. Um, that's usually the first uh, character. The second or second and third character usually is going to be the engine family. So you have the A engine family, the S engine family, and so many more. Um, then the, the third part of it, everything after the engine family, is going to be all the features that that engine has. Whether it is a dual overhead cam, whether it is, um, well, what is the, is it fuel injected, um, is it, does it have a turbo, uh, things like that. So uh, we'll get into each of these categories real quick, and then we'll do some examples so that you guys can understand um, the theory in the practice. What do you got to say about Toyota Motors? Not as good as Dodge. Oh, that is Mopar. That is debatable, and everybody knows that. See, these engines are extremely reliable. Toyota over-engineers the hell out of everything they do. Anyways, the, the, so let's talk about the, the, fir the first letter, the block model. Um, the block model uh, is usually a number. Um, in a in a lot of other in a lot of the modern ones is not, but it usually be, be, before the two thousands everything was uh, with letters. So for example, you can see a four, an eighteen, a twenty two, a two, things like that. That's a more newer one, right? So that's why it has that. But for example, uh, right here, if we take this example, the four AGE, there was you know there was uh, a two A. There's a 3A, there's a 4A, and it goes up to a 5A. Um, so then the 5A will be a larger displacement than the one that's 4A, and so on with the other ones, right? Um, every single engine family has multiple variations. Now it has to do with the size of the block, or the bore of the block, or, or it can also deal with um, you know the, the specific head that it, it has on. Um, so that'll be the first letter that you have to worry about. The second letter, you know, is that family that we talk about, for example, the A here, the R here, uh, the J here, and the, I believe in this one's the 16. Uh, anyways, so in the engine family, we, there's a lot of them. Uh, for example, you'll see, a, for example, in the Corolla wagon, you have a 3TC. The family will be the T, right? In the 4AGE, the, your family's the A, or, you know, so you can have T, I believe there is a J, there is, uh, you know, the R, and just like that, there's many, many engines um, that you can, uh, so the families, right? So usually in the families, engines are very, very similar one to the other. For example, if you look at a 2T, uh, T is very similar to than a 3T, uh, but then the rest of the components is what determines the majority of the differences. So let's talk about that. The third part is going to be the features. After you know what block model or revision um, and the engine family, the rest of the characters are going to tell you what that end, what's special about that engine. For example, if you have an engine that is a um, 3TC, you have your block model, your family, and then this is the feature. In this particular case, C will mean carburetor, right? Um, we're going to put a list right up here in the screen so that you can check out what each of the letters means for each features, there's a lot of them because it can mean, you know, uh, turbo, uh, carbureted, uh, dual port injection, is it a dual overhead cam, is it a sport or dual overhead cam. So there's so many things about the engine that you can, that they 
place with, with these letters. So there's going to be a list right here. So now that we know the basic structure of it, we can look at some examples. Um, so we're going to start right over here with the legendary 4AGE. Um, in this particular case, you have the fourth revision, right, which is actually a 1.6. Now keep in mind, that first number doesn't necessarily it is not necessarily equivalent to how big the engine is. It's not like this is a four liter, for example, right? It's a 1.6, uh, but the 3A, I believe, is a 1.5, and a 2A is a 1.3. So it's, it has to, it, it is directly related, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Now, if you go with the next letter, that's the A family, and if you have a 4A, there's many engines that start with that. There's a 4A FE, there's a 4A, C, which is carbureted, um, there's a 4A, G, E, et cetera, et cetera. So the magic in this engine comes in the features. G stands for sport, like sport oriented, dual overhead cam. And that's the important part about this. For example, an A86, that is a GTS, comes with a 4A, G, E, and a, you know, an A86 that's not a GTS, you know, like those SR5s that we see going for $40,000, which is ridiculous. Um, they will have an engine called a 4AC. Or, you know, and then in other models, there's a 4AFE and, and other combinations, but that is what makes it so valuable. Um, and then the E will be another feature that is um, fuel injected. So fuel injection will be equivalent to having that, um, that E. So if we move on to the next example, the truck, right, there's multiple versions of them. The 18R is a 2.0 and the 22R is a 2.4. So you can see how that number varies that, but they're the exact same family. They're the, still the R engine. Um, then you can also have, let's talk about those features, right? You can have a 22R, which is carbureted by default, but then you can also have a 22RE, which is electronic or a 22RTE which this letter, you already know what that means. That's a turbo version of the 22RE. So that's the most expensive uh, of those combinations. Super trocas. <laughs> Basically. And then you have over here, the, the famous 2JC, follows the same uh, pattern. The two is gonna be your block model. Um, that, that's why there's a 1JC and a 2JC is a new revision in the block. Um, and then you have uh, JZ is gonna be that, you know, that family engine. Um, and then you have GE which GE will mean, as we learned, this one is dual overhead cam, and uh, E will be uh, fuel injected. Now, there's also, as we all know, there's a 2JC GTE, there's a 2JC FE, and also also variations. So, depending on what these features are, is how you know what kind of engine you get. Some of them have EVTI, some of them don't, things like that varies the name. Let's do the last one. This is uh, the one coming for the Corolla uh, GR and the one that came in the Yaris GR in other markets. Uh, I, to me, this is a very interesting name because there's an E in there. It's a G16E, which I believe is, that's going to be the uh, the revision of the block and then the, the engine. And then you have the GTS, which G is, like we said, dual overhead cam. And then T, you know, that's turbo. And I'm actually not sure about the S, but I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the video. Super. Super cool. Anyways, if you guys have any questions or whatever, comment down below. That's going to be pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, we'll show some of the examples. And uh, if you guys like this type of content, we can do another one. For example, naming all the chassis uh, that the Toyota has so that, you know, it's sometimes it's a little bit non-intuitive to learn this stuff. But it can be once you understand the structure of them. Anyways, thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe down below. Peace. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys like this type of content, please do not hesitate to like and subscribe. And here are some other suggestions for you guys to take a look at some of the videos that we have.